Uh, Chief, talking about the uh, the situation with the roadless rule right now, following the Ninth Circuit uh, decision, as I mentioned, I think we know that there's still more legal wrangling and, and um, procedure before the exemption will definitively apply uh, on the Tongas. Once that's complete, and, and I would hope that uh, the Forest Service would defend the, the exemption in any subsequent proceedings, I, I think it will give you that flexibility that, that you and I ha have talked about. But can you um, explain to me this morning how the Ninth Circuit ruling will impact uh, whether it's future timber sales, I mentioned the renewable projects, whether it's our hydro projects, uh, possible transmission lines, uh, mining roads such as uh, those that we looked at when we were flying over uh, Prince of Wales, the, ne the um, Bocan Road, the Niblack projects. Can you speak to how this roadless exemption will impact effectively what you're doing within the Tongas right now? Well, what, we're, what we have planned for this year in the Tongas, with or without the exemption, it'll have no effect. All the projects that we have uh, planning to go forward with, the, the mining projects that you just man mentioned, the, the timber sale, the big thorn, uh, the, um, the wrangle sales, those will all go forward um, with or without any exemption. We'll have to wait and see, as you mentioned. Um, I think there's still some lengthy um, court time in front of us before we actually see um, what we end up, if the exemption will be reinstated or not. But Is the Forest Service going to defend the exemption? Uh, I'm not going to uh, comment on, on legislation until I actually see, you know, what comes out of, out of this process. I will make the commitment that, you know, we're going to, I want to resolve the issue with roadless. You know, I spent 37 years, my entire career, dealing with this. And I can at least, in most places now, we've resolved the issue. Um, Alaska is, is the last place. Well, we We're thought that we had it resolved it. You and I both know we thought we had resolved that back in 2003. I, too, want to finally and fully get this done. I, too, want to see us be able to access an area, whether it's for, for energy resources, um, for access uh, to road projects, transmissions. Um, but we've got to get this roadless issue resolved. And, and we need that flexibility that you've been talking about. Let me ask um, a couple other questions here in this same vein. Last, um, this past winter, you announced that you're appointing this public advisory council mm -hmm. under, under FACA, the, mm -hmm. the Federal Advisory Council Act, to consider these changes within the, the Tongas policy, um, particularly implementation of, of how you move towards towards second growth. Can you give me a quick status here on when this 15-member group uh, will be announced, uh, when it's going to start meeting, and then the composition? Because what I want to make sure is that you're going to have members that would be part of this that reflect a diversity of views and not, not just necessarily one, uh, one part of, of the community there. We're in the process, uh, I think shortly we'll be starting to review the applicants that submitted their um, the request to be considered. And then I'm hoping by the end of May we can actually announce um, the 15 uh, people that'll be on this. I will tell you, I can guarantee it will have a diverse set of interests. It's essential for us to be able to, to do that. And based on our past success, when we have taken the time with these, these formal um, these FACA committees to me are a formalized um, collaborative effort. To get that diverse set of interests, it's been um, remarkable what they've been able to reach agreement on and to be able to deal with some of the more difficult issues. Um, we saw it with the um, you know, Idaho Road List of Senator um, you know, Rich, who was um, at the other committee. If he was here, he'd be talking about that. The, uh, the work that we're seeing with the FACA committee we have on our planning rule to put the directives together, they've taken on the most difficult issues and actually, I've been so impressed. They've been able to resolve those and be able to make recommendations that we can move forward to implement. So based on my personal experience, this, this FACA group that we're putting together, it's absolutely essential that it provides that diverse set of interests so that we can 
be able to use that group's recommendations and be able to move forward with making the adjustments to the Tongass plan. Let me ask about that adjustments then, if you will, then. I've, I've mentioned several times here this morning my concern for the limitations that we place on our ability to, to move out our renewable uh, energy uh, resources. This has been a key priority of this administration, is move mm -hmm. towards renewables, and yet it's our own federal policies here that are limiting uh, any ability in Southeast to access, whether it's hydro, uh, whether it's geothermal or, or other uh, renewable energy. So the question this morning is whether or not there is a renewable energy plan for the Tongass, and if so, whether it would be included in the forest plan amendment uh, as, as we move forward with this process. And also, I've, I've queried uh, different members of, of the cabinet as they've come before other committees to just make sure that we are in agreement here that hydropower is considered a renewable resource. Mm -hmm. So question to you about the broader renewable energy plan and uh, whether within Forest Service you consider hydropower to be a renewable uh, energy resource that would meet with the definition and the goals of this administration. I consider hydro to be renewable energy and I it's essential there in Southeast especially for us to be able to take advantage of that that energy source and to re, replace um, you know the uh, barging of diesel to those communities which I feel is just a matter of time before we have uh, an accident where we were then doing a major cleanup and not only will it reduce the costs but it also reduces the impact the potential impact to the environment and that's why I think you're seeing the level of support from some of the conservation communities, environmental groups about moving forward with, you know, the hydro projects. And I know that, as we've talked before, there is a long list of proposals. And, um, you know, we're working very closely with the state to be able to, to, to take those on. I know, like, I think last year we, were, we dealt with, like, 29 different projects. 22 of them were FERC projects. Three of them are now under construction. This year, there's like 30 proposals, 24 of them are FERC projects, and we expect to have five. Five of those will start you know, construction this year. So we are, we are making headway. And, and as we've talked, you know, when it comes to the FERC projects, if the access that's needed to be able to, to develop that, that proposal is provided with or without roadless. So it's one of the things that we've talked about is to really understand um, the flexibility that's within, within the 2001 roadless rule. And so that's what we're focused on this year. We'll see how everything plays out in the courts, you know, for the future. So we are going to be focused on that. Your other question about what we'll consider um, with this amendment to the uh, forest plan. We want to take a focused effort to be able to, um, do uh, at, a, at a minimum, be able to deal with making some um, address some potential changes to be able to facilitate the transition to, um, to second growth, provide the, the bridge. And we'll look at other opportunities, but we'll want to be, um, be, I think, very strategic in being able to see what we really need to consider. And so when it comes to the hydro potential, we have the projects, so we have a good idea of where they're located, and so it's something we can take a look at before we even, you know, make the decision what we're going to be needing to address. So it's going to be part of the initial assessment that will be done uh, before we get, get started. But it's just essential that we move forward and um, amend the Tongass plan. Um, it's also, Senator, it, it's essential that um, your Sea Alaska bill gets through. I mean, um, not only is that important to the... Uh, for the communities, but it's essential for the, some key changes for our transition plan. And so it's another key part of this that needs to be in conjunction with as we move forward with um, our plan revision. Well, I appreciate your support of Sea Alaska. It was kind of a long and tortured process. I would like to see that through. I, I do want to make sure, though, that, that uh, again, as, as we're talking about renewable energy projects, mm -hmm. we remember that it's more than just the list that is in play today where a blessing has been given uh, to those specific projects. Because if we're limited to just that, how will a community, whether it's Ketchikan or Cake, be able to grow and evolve in the future if they don't have the ability to expand out their energy needs? And as you have pointed out, 
their energy needs can best be met through the addition of hydropower resources. We don't want to go back to the bad old days of, of, of diesel. That's not the future for this region. So as we, as we are looking for, to, to the forest plan amendments, I think it is key, I think it is absolutely critical that there be a renewable energy plan that not only incorporates our opportunity and potential for hydropower, but also the geothermal resources that we have there. And you had mentioned, uh, you know, biomass. There is, there is abundance mm -hmm. there, but I think it needs to be incorporated as part of the amended plan going forward. And quite honestly, if it's not, if a renewable energy plan is not incorporated, I think that that's very, very inconsistent with, again, this administration's push towards movement, towards renewables. And so how, how we balance that, I think, is going to be critical going forward. But to just suggest that it's just these particular projects that have been identified that, that meet that criteria doesn't allow for, for future for the Tonga. So we need to be working with you on, on really building out that renewable energy plan.